Hands up, lift your hands high if you know that you're free. You're free. Lift your life clean, cause you've been redeemed. redeemed. No compromise in the place in the king. On a shame, Romans 1 6. Today, 
Uh, I believe and understand that we're living in a time where the enemy is going to and fro. The Bible says, seeking whom he may devour. He's looking for someone to use, someone that will be that person that will do everything he says and do contrary to the word of God, but yet wear the Christian banner. Yeah. See, it's time out for hypocritical Christians. Yeah. Nobody wants to be a, a part of any organization that's hypocritical. If you're going to go to hell, go to hell in style. But don't take the church to hell. All right. See, the devil's busy. He's not taking coffee breaks. He don't take no, no smoke break. He ain't going on vacation. He's on the job. We try to vacation and he's out there working, putting in 40 plus. And he recognizes to get the Christian, he got to put in overtime, sometimes triple time. You know, we worried about, we try, we ain't even trying to put in a good 40, but want the full 40 hour blessing of God. Uh, we, we want full time benefits with part time salvation. I must repeat that, I like that. We want full time benefits with part time salvation. We want to be saved when we want to be saved. We want to be different when we want to be different. But yet we want God to bless us through the good, bad, and the ugly. Well, I'm sorry to tell you this morning, you ain't going to get what you think you're going to get from God because God is not obligated to take care of those that don't submit to him full time. God's grace and mercy is wonderful, but the Bible says there's a time where God's grace and mercy can run out and God will turn you over to a reprobate mind. You will think what you're doing right and don't realize it's so wrong, but you will be convinced that you're on the right track. Time for us to get it right. The world's getting more and more wicked, more and more perverse. Children going against the parent. Children, I mean, they have this, this entitlement mentality. Oh, I can say, I got my opinion. Well, can I have my opinion? I got something to say. No. Wait, 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 okay. Let me put a quarter in the meeting and park right here for a second. I don't know about y'all. Uh, I'm a little older than a few of y'all. You know, but I'm going to put it out here like this. When I was a child, you just couldn't say anything to your parent. You, you didn't have no opinion. Your opinion was, you... Your opinion is you need to eat and you need a place to live and you wanted to keep oxygen in your body. And you knew that if you opened your mouth and said the wrong thing, oxygen would be knocked out, you'd be kicked out, and you'd be hungry. But nowadays it seems like, oh, I got my own view. I got an opinion. I'm a person. Yeah. What happened to the slogan, I brought you in this world and I take you out? I think we stopped using that. We need to use it. Now, I understand Make these threats, and sometimes the threats you make, as we heard the other night, you ain't gonna do it, but you wanna say it. It feels good to say it, it's every kid. You act a fool. I ain't gonna shoot them and do that, but it feels good. I'm gonna put my foot so far. My foot. Well, you ain't gonna do it, but because you're not even gonna call who? CPS. But as I told my children, and I say this on camera, and all of them would testify, I told them, you're right, you have the right to call CPS. Now, you want to go down to some paper on the car bar? That's cool. But when you call CPS, all I'm asking you to do is one favor. Call Kaiser at the same time because they need to know that you're coming. And, and that's good. That way they can have your bed already prepared. So you want to make calls? Double up. Make another one. Make another one. And another one. And another one. Amen. So, so we got to understand that we have to watch what we say. Have to watch what we say. You think you all bad because you got a voice, oh, you a bad mother, but then you need to shut your mouth. You know, so, so, see, see, I heard somebody say, much prayer, much power. But then I also heard somebody say, little prayer, little power. But I believe no prayer, no power. Yeah. You, and if you ain't praying, then you ain't got no power. You can yeah. think you got the Holy Ghost residing in you with the evidence of speaking in the tongue. You say, sanctify, all that other stuff. But if you ain't praying to God for God to deliver you out of the, your mess, if you're not praying for your neighbor, if you're not praying for those that despite to use you, then guess what? You got no power. You can have a beautiful 2015 luxury car sitting in the garage. Beautiful. You don't put, you don't went from putting 22, you don't put quarters on it. You got 25 on there now. I mean, you got the windows tinted, you know, you got you got the racing stripe. I mean, I mean, you're doing it big. You got, got the smell good up in there. You got the, the leather trim with the, with the colored stitching and match the pin stuff. I mean, you're doing it big. The car all up in the garage looking good. You can have the key to the, to the car. Go up into the car. Slide your key up in there. Turn that bad boy nothing happened. Because if it ain't got no engine, it ain't got no power. In other words, it can look good, but if it ain't got nothing in it, it ain't not coming out. We look good. We say we Christians. We got the key to the Bible, but we ain't activating and putting it in place. We said everything but the word of God. Uh -huh. I'm going to get on somebody's nerves this morning, but it's okay. 
It's okay. You're going to be all right after a little while. i got to make you sick before I can heal you. If you don't know you're sick, I can't prescribe any medicine for you. I got to diagnose you on today. Your mouth is nasty. All of our mouths can get nasty. This tongue, small, small, but yet so powerful. Like you got a little man in your mouth with his pants down. That's what how nasty is coming out your mouth. Think about it. That's how. Very interesting, Shane. It's very interesting. Understand this. God has called us to be the salt of the earth. What is salt? Salt is flavor. Anything you put salt in brings out the flavor out of anything you put in. We're called to be preserves. We're supposed to preserve the word of God. When nobody else is willing to stand for righteousness sake and do it the right way, when the world wants to wants to congratulate gay marriage and, and congratulate homosexuals and, and all this gay pride and all this stuff, we're supposed to still stand as Christians. That ain't the word of God. I love you, but I won't support you. Just today, your cousin, your first cousin, we used to play house, we used to do this and that, and they changed. I need to pray for them. No, 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 no. Hold up, baby. It, it don't do no good you praying if they ain't praying for themselves. If they don't believe that can change, they ain't going to change. I don't care if you pray that Jesus come. We get it so twisted. Oh, that was, it was because of Grandmama and them, uh, uh, Medea's prayers back in the day that kept me. No, it was not. It was the grace of God that kept you. Yeah. Medea was just doing what God told her to do. Yeah. Pray for those that are weak. Pray for those that are strong. But at the end of the day, your deliverance came when you finally believed. Faith, your faith, it's according to your faith. Yeah. Yeah. So we understand this morning what God is trying to tell us. You got to be careful that you don't say the wrong thing in the wrong way and cause a person to turn totally away from God and miss out on their salvation. Because the Bible says, if you do, look at your neighbor and say, if you do, their blood is required on your hands. You understand that a lot of us don't understand that responsibility God has given us as Christians. That's why before I speak and before I before I, before I, 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 I preach a message, I like to make sure that I pray about it, to make sure that what I'm saying isn't something I'm trying to articulate, but it's something God is trying to relay out to his people so we can change. The word hits me first. Understand something. The word has to come to me in order for me to give to you. I can't sit here and teach the word if I ain't applied the word. Amen. If I'm cussing like a sailor and doing all this other stuff, then how can I expect you to change? So don't get mad when I hit you. It's just I've been hit already, and I need y'all to take a few body blows. Right. That's why before we speak, we need to pull out. You need to pull out your biblical, uh, biblical uh, library cards. You need to check out the good book and see what God has to say about our mouth. See, God desires for us to use words as instruments of praise, as instruments of faith and righteousness. But in order to do that, we must recognize the fallen nature of the tongue and the dangers that the tongue possesses when it's used incorrectly. Yeah. Let's look at Proverbs 18, verse 6 and 7. It says this. Fool's words get them into constant quarrels. They are asking for a beating. The mouths of fools are their ruin. They trap themselves with their lips. Back back up to verse 6. I, I just need to reemphasize this one here. Fool's words get them into constant quarrels. You know people that always want to be argumentative. They always got it right. They got all the answers, but they ain't, ain't about nothing. I mean, they got all that. This is how you do this. But you got, this is how you get a house. But yet, but yet you rent it. This, this is how you get a car. But yet you, you catch a ride. This is how you do this. But, but they got all the answers, but they ain't applied none of themselves. Fools' words get them into constant quarrels. They are asking for a beat. In other words, you open your mouth, somebody's going to slap you in it. Some of the fights that you've been in is because of your mouth. Some of the people that you punched in the mouth was because of their mouth. I don't know nobody that saw somebody just quiet and walked up on them and just took off on them. <laughs> Obviously, it was somewhere it said somewhere that offended somebody, and then you reacted. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't seen nobody walk up in the church and just go down the front row and just slap Kitchen. <laughs> he may not be the one you want to slap. It might be a whole different thing that happened. In other words, the scripture is saying a fool's lips bring him strike them in his mouth and bites a beating. Another way it said that the words of a talebearer are his wounds and they cause a riot. I've discovered that it doesn't take much for church, some church folk to jump on the gossip bandwagon. And before you know it, the whole church is turned upside down. Some of the things we say and, and, and we wonder why folk beat up on us. But it's because many times we speak before we pray about it. Sometimes you need to count down before you blast off. You don't have to be so quick to say something. I hate people that are so quick. 
You say something, they ain't even to what you're saying anyway. They already get ready. They're waiting for that last word to come out. Because they already know from that what they said. Which means they ain't heard nothing you were saying anyway. Some of y'all are them people. You could be on any side of the fence. Sometimes we're on both sides. Mm -hmm, let's just be real. Now, I don't want, you know, I don't want what is going on to be said if it comes. I want to make sure stuff comes to me from God. You want to make sure stuff is right. But the Bible says the fool's lips enters into contempt and his wild mouth calling for a stroke. But not only that, like we said in verse 7, it said a fool's mouth is his destruction and his lips are snared and sold. In other words, what you say can bring destruction on you. In other words, what you say, that's why the Bible says the power of life and death is in the power of the tongue. So when you're talking about somebody else, you actually bring a judgment on yourself. Yeah, that's why you gotta be careful. Say, that's why you gotta break the scripture down right. Because some of us read it and read the surface and don't realize what it's saying. What it's saying is your big mouth is getting you into big trouble. You think you affected that person because you cussed them out real good. Oh, I laid them out. That's how we sit it back east. So oh, I laid them out. I don't understand what that means when you laid them out. You cussed them out real good though. Don't realize that that laying out comes back on you. Yeah. You just laid yourself out. Uh huh. And if I had time, matter of fact, you know what? Go to verse eight. Go to verse eight, Kate. Y'all want to read verse eight too? Go, to, go, go and pull it up, a Proverbs 18, verse 8. Because I, I want you to hear this too, because some of us fall into this category that, that we, uh, it's a word that's used in the Bible, and a lot of times we don't know what it is, and we, we think it's something different. But I want to read it. The words of a gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to the inmost parts. King James says the words of a talebearer yeah. are as wounds. In other words, a talebearer are those who secretly carry stories from house to house. Some of the information they got may be true, but, but there are, are secrets that they don't tell. They only tell part of the story, and, and what they do, they cause and, and try to bring down a person's reputation and try to bring down the character, because they never tell the full story. They just tell what we call what? The juicy part. They don't tell the whole story of how they said something and how this happened. They tell the part that brings the most attention. They're called tailbearing, gossip. Some of us said, oh, this is amazing. Okay. It's amazing to me. Let me, let me tell you how, how it works. Because I don't want to point at nobody or anything like that. But let's see if you fall into this. It's amazing to me, because I've heard it before, how you can be on the phone with somebody, Rihanna, talking about this one person, gossip. Get off the phone, and then get on another phone call and talk about the person you were just on the phone with. You, girl, I was just on the phone with, 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 with Sajarine, and Sajarine was telling me about. I know y'all like, where does he come with these names? Because here's the thing. If I call your name, you're going to get offended. So I, I need to make up names so that way it won't be as obvious who I'm talking about. Because if I said your name, some of you be like this, be sitting there, and as soon as I say your name, you start looking around. And get this little frown on your face because now you offended. And then I have to apologize because I offended you. So being, I don't want to apologize for offending you. I'm going to make up name. Her name was Sajarine. <laughs> Twin sister name, Tangerine. There you go. Now I got a church. Amen. God is good. But anyway, what we fail many times to understand is the reality of what it says in verse 21 of the same uh, book of Proverbs. When it says that death and life and the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. In other words, words can bring life or death to a situation. Talk too much, and you may have to eat everything that you see. See, I'm going to leave you alone for a minute because some of y'all are like, okay, he's talking about me. Yes, I am, and it's all good. But truth be told, some of the stuff you're going through right now is because of stuff that you said in the past about people. Remember, the Bible said, what a man soweth. That shall he also reap. So a lot of us were gossips back in the day, and we think just because we got saved, there's no repercussions for what we've done. There are always repercussions, but God's grace and mercy will bring you through yeah. those repercussions. But you yeah. can't expect to get off clean when you committed a crime and you got caught. You got caught, it's just that Jesus put you in his cell of salvation to protect you. But that don't mean that you're not going to deal with some of the repercussions. Yeah. It's amazing how we do all this talking outside of church and the to get talking. I can't get an amen, a hallelujah, what the hello. I can't get nothing. Mm. It's all right. Mom, Molly with me. She's back there saying amen, waving at you, throwing up the flag. Yes. Thank the Lord for my mom. Now, don't misunderstand what I'm trying to say this morning. If someone's life 
is headed in the wrong direction because of sin, then yes, you and I are obligated. We have a responsibility to try to help get them out of the situation they're in. You do not agree with what they're doing. You talk to them and you try to instill the word of God in them and you try to support them through their chain. You don't just kick them to the curb. You don't sugarcoat the word in order to please them. You sometimes, bad medicine is the best thing for them and sometimes it may offend them, but if it's a good offense in the sense of trying to save them, getting them back on the right track because they're headed in the structure, then yes, you are obligated to talk in that aspect. But you're not supposed to talk and down in them. What I'm trying to say to you is, because in yourself, in your human nature, anything that come out at you ain't going to be right. Nothing you try to say. Remember the Bible, God calls us to be instruments of praise. Instruments of faith. Instruments of his salvation. Which we're called to be instruments. And instruments don't play themselves. And they just say this. And we just had, a, I, I got to give you a witness because some of y'all are like, well, I, I think they're kids because you can put them on or they had the one where you push the button. I ain't talking about that. You've been up in towards us too much. Anyway, <laughs> we just saw this happen now. Brandon's our saxophonist, right? right? Now, if I recall, I'm going to digress. Brandon was up here singing. I didn't even know saxophone playing, but the instrument was over there. You're an instrument of God's praise. You can't play yourself. You have to allow God to hit every note and every key in you and tell you what to say. That's why you got to pray before you open your mouth. You can't just say anything you want. Oh, I'm just trying to keep it real. I'm keeping it 100. You use that as an excuse to get out of you what you want to say. It's your way of cussing the person out Christian style. Come on. Come on. Ain't no future in your front. Anyway, I believe as Christians, we need to consider four things this morning before we say anything to anybody. I'm going to give you four things and we're going to shut this piece down and you're going to get out of here and you're going to open your mouth the proper way. Right. Right. Amen. You Amen. may be quiet now and it's good that you're quiet because you, you're going through your evaluation. Yes. Yes. You got on, you got on your, your medical garb and, and I'm, I'm poking around and I'm taking some tests. But now it's time for you to get the instructions, instructions to your prescription and we're going to take you down to the pharmacy and get your medicine. Wow. Hallelujah. Amen. Four things you need to do, you need to consider. First thing, is it true? Second thing, is it complete? Third, is it necessary? And the fourth thing, is it kind? One, is it true? Two, is it complete? Three, is it necessary? Four, is it kind? If we consider those four things, some of us wouldn't talk half as much as we talk. There'd be some real silent folk running around the house be dead quiet. Only person talking to the dog. Who? Right, that's all you're going to hear because you, you, you ain't got nothing good to say. I right, See, that's why I'm like dealing with negative people. Negative people got more to say. That's why my pastor's corner said the widest mouth usually come from the most narrow-minded. Usually those that talk the most got the, got, the, got the most narrow mind and had the most twisted way of thinking but got the most to say. I've come to realize you can't insert your foot in your mouth if you keep your mouth closed. Oops. Anyway, so first thing we got to consider, is it true? Before you repeat something, make sure it's true. We'll repeat something. Well, who told you that? Tyrone? Well, where did Tyrone get it from? I don't know, but you know, Tyrone always keep it real. I, I don't think Tyrone have a reason to lie to him. You believe in Tyrone on something that ain't got nothing to do with you that's causing you to have a feeling towards the person based on how Tyrone feel about the person. Now realize that Tyrone only told you part of the story and then Tyrone disappeared. So when Tyrone disappeared, when you finally find out the truth, you know what you need to do? You need to call Tyrone and check it. I heard someone say, I believe half of what I see and nothing of what I hear. See, just because someone said it doesn't make it true, it's easy to jump to the wrong conclusion. So before you believe something, before you repeat something, make sure it's true. Next, is it complete? In other words, it's easy to get half the story. Sometimes what was said is true, but the information we get is not always complete. Some folks like to leave out certain information because it makes the gossip spicier. But tell somebody, make sure you get the whole story. Look at your neighbor and say, get the whole story. Get the whole story. Look, at, look at your neighbor and tell them, give me all the truth. Give me all the truth. Don't give me nothing. You can't give me the whole story. 
Well, I ain't got all of it, but this, I, I heard this part. And, you know, and one plus one equals two. And, and so I, we can add this and add this. And you add up a whole bunch of stuff that ain't right. And now you got your mouth on people. You talking about the pastor. You talking about everybody else. Oh, he this and that. Yeah, he got on a new suit. And you don't know where the new suit come from. Why the preachers that are living right got to get up and explain to everybody why they look a certain way? Why do I got to explain to you that someone gave me this suit? Or that somebody blessed me with this in order for you to believe that I ain't taking your money? Then you run around the church. You notice he got a new car. People talk about their line. They line got a new car. You know, I, I wonder what he's doing. He had this car for three months. Now he done switched to that car. And you know, I don't know what he's doing. And he done got this car. Now he do these rims on there on Friday. Then Saturday he's talking about, I got some new shoes on the chain. What he's doing? He must be dealing drugs. Amazon ain't paying like that. Right. You don't know what he's saying. You don't know what he's doing. You don't know who's blessing him. You know, you need to get your mouth off of him. You need to get your own business. Because if you get your own business, you ain't got no business in somebody else's business. Amen. Amen. Sick and tired of gossiping in church. Talking about people. We should be happy that people are getting blessed. Sharice right. coming in here with some new pants on. You can tell me, where, where she get? I see that's, that's another new outfit. Well, how are you able to count everybody's outfit? Cause you can't, cause you, cause you, you broke, you ain't got no money to do nothing, you spending your money on everything else, the Vanique and all that, I know, I know you're drinking the Vanique, I see it on Facebook, I know you're sipping it, cause it's purple, it's royalty. <laughs> but you're talking about other people, and don't know the story behind them, you, you see their glory, but you don't know their story. I shouldn't have to explain to you why I'm walking in abundance. I shouldn't have to explain to you why God is favoring me. Because the same favor I got, you can get it. But are you willing to do what I'm doing in order to get God's favor? Make sure the story is complete. Then, is it necessary for you to talk? What you say may be true. It may even be complete. But is it necessary? If it's not going to build up, then maybe you need to shut up. Put that on Facebook. If it ain't gonna build up, you better put it on for me, because after much, if it ain't on, I'll put it up. If it ain't gonna build up, you better shut up. Brandon put it up right now. You know, he filming on the service. He do all the Clint got the camera in the back, Brandon got it on the side. He doing everything. We filming. We doing stuff live and living in color. Amen. But God is good. So is it necessary? If it ain't gonna build that person up, then shut up. Peter, I don't tell you to shut up. Okay, I'm gonna tell you shut up. Shut up. It's so offended, can't tell you to shut up. Shut up means close. So you get offended by that? You get offended because you don't know nobody telling you what you're doing wrong because you want to stay justified in your mouth and mess and saying all kind of negative stuff because you like gossip. You like to talk about people. But you know what? I'm tired of you talking about people. Let me go up in your house for a minute. Let's talk about you. Let's sit at your kitchen table and let's talk a while about you. Because see, now you got to embrace about everybody else. You know everybody else is busy. You know what everybody's going through. You know everybody else is struggling. You know what everybody's sin. What they say? Don't judge my sin because I sin differently. Come on. Because I sin differently than you, so my sin is different than yours. You so say your, your, your sin is better. Come on. You you Come on. only cussing. I'm, I'm caught up in a drug. Just, just, but, but on the scale of one to ten, mine's a ten, yours is a one. No, no, it's because you choose not to deal with yours, so you want to talk about mine and magnify mine with your mouth. Shut your mouth. You a bad mother, but. Shut your mouth. Uh huh. See, God wants to build people up in faith, not tear them down. They already know they're down. If I'm down, I don't need you to tell me I'm down. Yeah, I'm struggling. Man, you struggling? Yeah, God, I know that. It's obvious. Man, you going through some? Yes. Yeah. How'd you figure that out? You're a genius. You ain't seen me at church in a month. You ain't seen my post on Facebook. I sound like I'm in depression. Yeah, I'm going through. But you ain't called me. You're going to wait till you see me and then tell me I'm this. I know I'm down. I don't need you to tell me I'm down. Tell me how to get up. You up. Can you lift me up? <laughs> so quick to tell people they down. Oh, you going through. I can go. He called all those shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Lord, ooh, 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 the Lord told me. The Lord don't need to tell you everything. You can see it. We put the Lord in. The Lord ain't even there. You can see what somebody going through. Some people wear their situation on them. You ain't got to be so deep. Go to them and be like, Shane, I tell you right now, baby girl, I can tell you going through something. What's up? You want to talk? 
We can keep it in confidence. What's going on? I want to help you. Whatever you're dealing with, whatever you need help with, I think I'm here. I'm going to tell you now before you tell me everything, though. Financially, I can't help you. Anything else? Uh, prayer, uh, fasting, all that. But money, money I have you now. But what I do have is, is the Lord. Oh, y'all think I'm joking. That's, that's, that's being real. You don't tell them I can help you with anything because you're the person who tells them I got. Oh, girl, I just need about $50. Because, <laughs> you know, we're good at giving out sympathy 20s. You know, that, we don't mind a sympathy 20. We just missed the meal. We don't give you a sympathy 20. But when you get the 50, like, really? that's, that's just like anniversary gift type money outside. Okay. You know, so, so you got to learn to stop downing people when they're down and help bring them back up. He who is spiritual. You got it together. Help bring the other brother up. The Bible, that's why I have an issue with certain preachers that, that so much they don't, don't want to say nothing about what they're struggling with. But the Bible says that this is called the pool pit. We're called to pull people out the pit. We're not called to sit up here and be glorious and build ourselves up, but we got it all together. I'm supposed to let you know. I need to be transparent. I got struggle. Every day I want to cuss somebody out. Why? Because in me, in my nature, there dwells no good thing. And I want to cuss them. Why? I was raised to cuss. I was bred to cuss. My mama put cussing in my blood, but the blood of Jesus changed me. I walk in the blood of, my, of the world that I am, and I'll be no good to anybody else. I can't preach the gospel and not live it. I shouldn't be having big houses, cars, all these other things, and y'all poor, mother mouth, broke, ain't got nothing. No, that's why I'm glad I ain't into the materialistic thing, but God said this, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. I'm glad that in this church, in remnant of life, that I've seen people get jobs. I'm talking not one, not two, not three. I've seen people get promotions. I've seen people, uh, marriages get back together. I've seen relationships and then after that, I see people get new cars, new makeup because they saw God first. God fixed the serpent. Then God gave them the blessing. Do it right. Do it the right way. Your business will flourish. Everything will flourish. You can have all the other stuff. Seek God first. Do God's word first. Watch your mouth. And then finally, fourth thing, is it kind? Romans 12, 10 says this, be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. In other words, I want you to be blessed more than myself. If your faith is that strong, why can't you do that? See, my faith is strong enough that God's going to take care of me. I don't mind giving you my last $5. Well, that's my last five. Well, that $5 ain't going to pay your water bill. I don't know nobody who got no five. The dog's water bill ain't five dollars as much water as they drink. So what makes you think that five dollars going to help you meet a bill? I'd rather give that five away to somebody that's hungry, that needs it. Trust God. Do what the word says. God, you said if I give, it will be given back to me. Good measure. Press down. Shake the gun. So yeah, this is my last uh, a physical five, but I'm believing you for the spiritual thousands and millions. So I'm going to bless this person that's in need. And, and I know that you're going to take care of me on the back end. And, I, and that's how God works. God will never let you outdo him. Stop telling people. I told them at Bible study on Tuesday. Stop telling folks you broke. You are never broke as a Christian. That's why nobody want to be saved. They think you come to church as Christians. You broke. You can't have nothing. All they care about is Mercedes Benz's suits and St. John Nick skirt, but don't know St. Mark, Luke, or none of them. I got to get you. think you arrived when you were able to get a St. John Nick, Nick suit. But you ain't read the book of St. Mark. Matt, you need to get you a, a saint living is what you need to get and get living right. Watch your mouth. You don't tell people you broke. You ain't broke. I'm not in a financial position to help you right now. I'm in between paycheck. I don't live paycheck to paycheck. I live blessing to blessing day to day. When I wake up, God said, he loves me with benefits daily. Why do I keep saying that I'm going from paycheck to paycheck? You keep saying it, that's what's happening. I'm in between my blessings. Not in between paychecks. I'm in between my abundance. I'm going to put power in your mouth. I ain't sick. I'm catching a healing. Oh, I look like my sinuses are building up. You get breathing all hard, your nose flaring up. You're taking Sudafed, Zudafed, and Budafed, and ain't nothing working. Have you tried to be fed by the Bible? That's what you that fed you need is Bible fed. Forget the Sudafed.
Sorry, y'all get excited about this word. Then Paul says in Ephesians, he says, Paul says this in Ephesians, he said, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all muttering and malice and, and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God Christ forgave you of your sins. When the devil comes to you like a roaring lion, trying to get you to gossip, you need to open your mouth and say, I ain't gossiping no more. I, I, let me, let's talk about my blessings. Let's talk about how God delivered me in 85. Let's talk about how God kept me from that car wreck. We leave the club at 2 in the morning, key it up, lick it up. You driving home, can't halfway see. And somehow you were able to make it to your bed. You didn't get pulled over by the cop. You didn't get no DUI. You didn't get in no accident. You could have hit somebody, killed somebody, be in jail right now. But God saw fit, even in your stinking sin, God saw fit, put his angel of protection around you, got you home. Sometimes, the only way I knew I got home, the way I, I couldn't even see the line, all I, all I saw and heard was this on the way home. I was leaving the club one night, 1.32 in the morning. Didn't have nobody to go home with. Because you left to go to the club for, you trying to go home with somebody. That night, my A game wasn't on. And I didn't go home with nothing unless there was nines or above. Because if I'm a nine, I don't dumb down to go with eights and sevens. Okay, be real with yourself. You a five, stop trying to get a 10. Stay in your, stay in your area. Stay in your area. Anyway. So I'm going home, and the only thing I remember, Greg, is boom, 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 boom. That's all I heard in my head. Because I was riding those dots in the middle of the line to, to make sure I stayed in my lane, to get home. Because I couldn't see. I, I didn't have nobody roll with me. You thought there was your friend, but they left you. You know, and, and you key up, and all of them boom, boom, riding boom, boom, boom. But I got home. Don't worry. That was the grace of God. Yeah. Didn't get pulled over. Yeah. You need to learn to tell people, tell the devil about your blessing. Well, no, I don't want to talk about this. But no, while you're talking about my past, let's talk about your future. All right. Yeah. Let's do that, Satan. Yeah. I understand. And I don't have time to talk about it. I ain't got time for that. I'm going to talk about the blessing that God has already blessed me with what he's going to continue to bless me with. Matter of fact, I need to get a praise on right now because somebody one time told me I would never be nothing. Someone told me I was never going to make it. You just washed up. You ain't never going to make it. Somebody said, you're going to be just like your no good daddy. Uh -huh. and, and truth be told, some of it was true, but most of it was a lie. But, but I understand something. You can't hurt what's already healed. You, you can't kill what's already dead. So you can talk about me, you can say all this other stuff, and it's okay. Keep running your mouth. But I'm not going to submit myself to your mouth and not walk in the abundance of what God always told me that I am. I've been lied on. I've been talked about. I've been mistreated. I've been abused. I know you heard the gossip about me. <laughs> yeah, I've been down. I've heard this saying. I've been down almost to the ground. But as long as I got King Jesus, uh -huh, I don't need nobody else. And when I think of the goodness of Jesus, Kitchen, and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, I thank God for saving me. So you can say what you want about me, I ain't got no problem with it. I'm still going to give God praise. If I don't praise him, the Bible says the rocks will praise him. And God has done too much for me, for me to allow some little, itty, bitty, stupid, hard rock to praise God. God brought me a mighty long way. I may not be where I think I should be, but thank God I ain't where I should be based on where I was. Is there anybody here today besides me who's been through some stuff? And now that God has delivered you, you don't care what people say about you. You're going to praise him anyway. Yeah, I'm struggling, but I'll praise him anyway. Uh -huh. I'm going through some stuff, but I'm going to praise him anyway. I'm unemployed, but I'm going to praise him anyway. I'm almost 5150, but I'm going to praise him anyway. My kids might be on drugs, but I'm going to praise him anyway. My marriage is going through some stuff, but I'm going to praise him anyway. I don't have money in the bank, but I'm going to praise him anyway. I don't feel right in my mind, but I'm going to praise him anyway. I don't got it all together, but I'm going to praise him anyway. I'm going to praise him anyway. People lie to him. I'm going to praise him anyway. And because I praise God, I have the authority, I have the right, the power to speak into every situation of my life. I can speak to those empty pockets and tell them be healed. I can speak to this sick body and say you shall be healed. I can speak to the storm and say please be still. I can 
can speak to every situation and be delivered because if I give God praise, if I speak out of my mouth the power of God, I shall receive all that God has promised me. Put your hand together to God. Controlling your mouth so quick to say something, especially negative stuff. 